connecting GNS3 to live gear with an 802.1Q trunk and doing it on a Mac. Let's begin. Our objective in this micro nugget is simple. We want to take a GNS3 environment that we've created in a Mac environment using GNS3 and Dynamips and connect it over to a real world environment so we can have a marriage of the two. We could have gear on the physical environment and logical gear and have them interact with each other, including the ability to use a trunk. To do it, it's quite simple. First of all, if you're going to do it on a Macintosh, you need to have a Macintosh. <laughs> so assuming that's in place, here are the ingredients. We're going to take a router, a virtual router, and install a 16-port switch module in it. That 16-port switch module has the ability natively to do trunking with 802.1Q. We're going to logically connect the interface of the router to the cloud, which represents the Macintosh's EN0 interface. I physically have EN0 here connected to a physical port, which is gig 0 slash 3, on a real switch. Once these positions are in place, we simply configure this port and this port to become trunks, and poof, we have a trunk. I've got the physical components already in place here. The EN0 is physically connected with the cable to port gig 0 3. Let's build a brand new topology, set up a trunk, and verify it works. To start off, I want to point out that I do have EN0, which is physically connected, and it's up. From a Macintosh perspective, it's not shut down or disabled or anything like that. And let's go ahead and create our new topology. We'll need at least one router. So let's bring in a 3700. I have already got an image set up for that one. And let's configure that router to add a module. So under slots, I'm simply going to say in slot number one, I want that 16 port switch module, just like that. Click on OK. And it says, Keith, you've got to use manual mode. And that's fine. I'm happy to use manual mode. That refers to when I build connections with this tool right here, I need to choose manual option to pick my ports as I put them in. No worries. We need a cloud that's going to represent our EN0 physical interface on this Macintosh. We're going to double click it to tell it that that's exactly what it's representing, EN0. Again, that's the physical interface, the Ethernet connection. And I'm clicking oh, there, OK there as well. I need to build a connection. No worries. We'll use a connection tool and manual. And we'll say, I want to go from the network input output for the EN0 to the interface. Let's go to 1.1. One, one. That matches our topology and also happens to be one of the ports on that 16 port switch module. So fantastic. Let's start it up. So we're going to just click on the go button. As it boots up, we'll go ahead and open up a console to it with this icon right here. We can either click here or we could right click and say, I want to go to a console. Either way, it's going to work great. So here's our console port for that device. Looks like it's booting up, doing its power on self-test. <laughs> this is the part we have to whisper because the router doesn't know it's running on virtualized hardware. And let's configure a couple details of him. Let's move him up here so we can see the interface. On the router, we'll go ahead and go into configuration mode, interface FA1 slash 1. Let's go ahead and do a no shutdown. And we'll say switch port, trunk, encapsulation dot 1Q. Now on the 16 port switch module, it doesn't do ISL. So this is just to help reinforce the concept that it that we're using dot one Q. And let's say switch port mode trunk. Congratulations, you are now a trunk. Now on the switch, we would also make sure that the switch is also configured as a trunk. So if we go over to the switch right here, these are CDP messages, Cisco Discovery Protocol, that are advertising the differences. So I'm gonna go back to this router and say, Dear Mr. Interface, FA1 slash one. I want your speed to be 100 and your duplex to be full. <laughs> it's like, may your days be merry and bright, I think, uh, from a computer perspective. All right. That won't, that won't stop our progress. That's just going to avoid the CDP messages warning us every 60 seconds that there's an issue. All right. So it says it's become a trunk. That's fantastic. We'll do a show interface trunk. And it says, ooh, Keith, you've got... This is fun. Look at this. It says right here, you've got... The trunking mode is set to on, encapsulation.1q, it thinks it's trunking, the native VLAN is one by default. There aren't any VLAN restrictions. We only have one VLAN on this router because we haven't created any new ones yet, and nothing is being forwarded. And that's primarily because spanning tree, traditional, the, ex the original flavor of spanning tree, not extra crispy, original flavor, 802.1d, we get 15 seconds for listening, 15 seconds for learning before we start forwarding, and I think that has gone on long enough, and now we're forwarding. So this is great news. So from this perspective, we're set. Let's go take a look at the switch on the other side. And let's do a show CDP neighbors. So show CDP neighbor says, hey, I've got this really cool guy on the other side. He's coming in from his fast Ethernet 1 slash 1. It's connecting to my local gig 03. He calls himself router. 
which is matching this host name right here, and that's based on CDP. So let's take a look at the switches configuration. This is the physical 3560. We'll do a show interface. Let's do a show run interface gig zero slash three to see what's there. And this part's already set up. He's all ready to go. He says, okay, speed 100, duplex full. I want to be a trunk, and I'm going to use dot one q which matches our router. Now, I want to show you something magical. <laughs> Let's do a <laughs> dangerous and magical. Do a, sh a show VTP status. Now, this guy says, I have a VTP domain all set, and I've got some VLANs, too. We do a show VLAN brief. He's got four VLANs he knows about, one, two, three, and 50. And he's got some ports assigned to him. My hands will never leave my arms. Check this out. Because the trunk is there and because server mode for VTP is a default, this router has also learned about those VLANs. So, so let's take a look. If we do a show VTP status, and you, and you saw me bring this in as well. So there's if we do shows VTP status and a show VLAN switch which is how you do a show vlan brief equivalent oh we don't have them yet so we haven't waited quite long enough for the vtp updates to take hold <laughs> but i have faith that they will show up let's do a show vlan brief show vlan switch again and we have it one more second because this guy is a vtp server show vtp status and let's check one more time let's do a show interface status so that just confirms our trunk is there, <laughs> and that's not going to confirm our VLANs for us. Let's do a show VLAN switch. There we go. Okay, just wasn't quite patient enough. So this is all thanks to VTP. If we do a show of VTP status again, it's going to show us that we got a new VTP domain name because we're a brand new switch. We bought into everything, and we have some new VLANs as well. This is really cool because now we can verify very quickly that the trunk is actually working. Let's create a new interface VLAN Three. This is a switched virtual interface on this router. And we'll say IP address is going to be 3.3.3.1. And I think that's it. So it knows it's VLAN 3. <laughs> and let's go to the switch and make sure it also has a VLAN 3 interface. And we'll talk across the trunk using the tagging. So here's our switch. If we do a show IP interface brief and we exclude anything that has the word una in it so we won't get the unassigned interfaces so it's got a vlan 3 interface of 333.161 so we should be able to ping from our vlan 3 interface to its vlan 3 interface just by doing ping of 3.3.3.161 now what's going to make it fun is we can trace this as well with the capturing with wireshark and actually see it happening so before we do the ping let's capture and say yep i want to capture it and i want to go ahead and see it live so we'll start wireshark We'll move it over to the side so we can see the play-by-play -play action. And we'll start our ping. So the ping should involve an ARP request, and it should involve some ICMP echo requests and echo replies. We'll stop that capture and take a look at the output. So here's our ping request. You'll notice that it was sent with an 802.1Q tag. The tag said VLAN 3. And if we created a VLAN 2 interface, which we could do real quick. So let's create interface VLAN 2, IP address 2.2.2.1. .2 .2 And we did a ping of 2.2.2.161. Let's confirm that address on the switch again. Right here. That should be sent over, and it should be VLAN 2 tags. We can verify that real quick. We'll stop this capture. We'll close that and say, I don't want to save it. Thanks for asking. We'll start the capture again. We'll say, I want to view it. Oops. We'll start the capture again. I stopped it before. And then we'll say, we want to view it. And while that's going, we'll do our ping once more. This time it should be going over VLAN 2 with a tag of 2. So if we stop that capture and look at the details of it, we'll grab any one of these it should do and look at the 802.1Q and sure enough, there's the ID2 right in it. In this nugget, we took a look at one of many options of taking a GNS3 environment on a Macintosh and connecting it to live gear. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.